Hi, Omar here, and today we're gonna discuss dynamic portraits. This is any kind of portrait that is not a regular old picture of someone. Those are fine, we have to take those. <laughs> but you should try to mix in a little bit of motion, a little bit of situ... You put people in situations where you can get some surprises. And sometimes these end up being the most fun and the best portraits. All right, let me give you some tips for dynamic portraits. The first one is don't do dynamic portraits. That's the first tip right there. <laughs> the first tip is make sure you get all the safe stuff first before you start fooling around. Because uh, although we love the dynamic portraits and the hugs and the love and the people cracking up and looking like horses, <laughs> most clients want to hang up on the wall something that's not so dynamic. You know, most of my clients love the dynamic ones, but if they're gonna put something in a book or on a wall, they'll most likely pick something that's static. Not my favorite images, but that's what we're accustomed to putting up on a wall or a picture frame or printing. So my first tip is make sure you get everyone looking normal before you have them acting like fools during your portrait session. So that's tip number one, get the safe shots first. My second tip, especially with kids, is make sure everyone's warmed up. Don't just start the portrait session with like, all right, people, we're gonna start running and jumping and everyone laughing. So with most clients, you'll kind of want to warm up first. You want everyone to kind of have normal poses and then they get more comfortable with you and you can start moving into the dynamic phase. If you have smaller children, this may not apply because a lot of times with little kids, if you're a goofball um, and you relate to kids really quickly, you're not going to start posing them because they kind of will try to, f a lot of kids will try to fight you on that. So you want them on your side. So sometimes with younger kids, you will work backwards. You'll actually start with the dynamic stuff, skipping and jumping and being cute and fun and hugs, snap away like crazy. And then you can transition into the more safe stuff when it's a time out. And by the way, have gummy bears, have little bits of candy. Um, just make sure it's okay with mom first. <laughs> but this stuff really helps if you're working with the little, little, little kids. Play with them first, get your dynamic shots, and then maybe take a time out somewhere where they already like you, they think you're funny, and then you're it's okay to do shots where they're sitting together. And then of course, when they're sitting together, you could jump into more dynamic poses from the safe poses. Walking. Walking is probably one of the easiest ways to get your portraits to be a little bit more dynamic. You could do super cool guy walking. You could do skipping. You could just do walk and talk where people will walk a little bit, talk, walk forward. <laughs> uh, just figure out what works best for you, but getting people, uh, give them a starting point, uh, you know, frame up the shot, give them a starting point and tell them when to stop because they won't stop by the way. They'll just keep walking and they'll you know, go beyond your frame and then have them do it a couple of times. So walking is probably the best way to get the first stage of dynamic. Now, if you have kids and older kids and teens, which is what I mostly shoot, they love jumping and they love skipping and that definitely gives you a lot of hair motion and their faces just light up because they're they're kids. They want to jump around, okay? So, and also you gave them permission to be a kid, especially with the teens I work with. They're, oh, they're also cool. Yeah, until you tell them to skip and they turn into goofballs like me. So we always always have a good time with that. Now, posing can make your, you know, you can have stationary portraits, but actual posing will give the illusion of that there is motion. So if you have people like leaning on a wall or if they're playing with their hair while they lean, if you have people in angles, if you have people looking somewhere, there is the sort of, it implies that there was motion or there is motion. Okay, so that could be, Part, you know, instead of having a stationary portrait like this, if you have someone maybe playing with their shirt and they're looking somewhere, well, they could be stationary, but it implies motion. The next tip I have is for you, I was, it kind of was related to what I just said, is have the hands always doing something. Um, this goes with posing as well, but you know, if you have someone sort of pretending they're putting soap on, I got that hint from Zach Arias a long time ago. He said that for, when he would photograph bands and rock bands, he would have guys just kind of 
you know, if you do this with your hands and someone snaps the shot, you know, you got a sort of like a mid motion with the hands. And so a lot of times I'll have girls either play with a ring or a little bracelet. I'll have uh, boys sort of, you know, play with their hands a little bit and you get kind of a cool shot there. So work with the hands. Hands can grab onto things, hair, and that also makes the portrait just a little bit more dynamic. Okay, what else we got here? I have something that says pose to talk. Hmm, what does that mean? Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> remember I told you to get all the safe shots first? After you get the safe shot, you can actually transition from that safe shot. Well, then you can set up a situation where you have, for example, everyone look at someone. You can have people fake talk. Like you say, hey, you two talk and you two talk. And a lot of times what's fun about this is if it's a family, they ham it up like, hey, how you doing? You know, and it, it kind of can get goofy and fun. And especially if you make fun of them, if you're like, you guys are the worst actors ever, <laughs> you know, or something like that. So the transition from a pose shot, you have people do something. And then what's great is if you have them look back at you, a lot of times they have just been fooling around or they've just been fake talking. And if they look at you, you get a really good spark. You get people, people's real emotion and their real faces after your little acting. So that's a good hint to actually get a good portrait as well. Some other things I've done is, like I said, fake talk to one another. Here I put fake fight or wrestle. <laughs> just be careful. This one's good with brothers, you know. If you just say fight, fight, you know, they kind of just fake fight or something. But just be careful because some boys uh, get out of control. <laughs> and like I, I wrote a little note here that this is all really a setup sometimes. Sometimes the shot is not them wrestling or them punching. Urgh. A lot of times it's how, what they do after. And what they do after a lot of times is that beautiful laugh, that realness. And just be ready. And another hint I have for you is how you sh shoot your camera. I actually shoot in high burst all the time just because I'm always ready for these peak emotion, this, you know, this laughing and all this stuff. So I will always shoot at least five frames a second where I'm shooting single focus, sorry, single shot. Uh, but if I press down the shutter, it will shoot five frames in one second in case something cool like that happens. Uh, another note I put here is look for in-between moments can also be dynamic. Uh, well, some of my favorite photographs that I take are sometimes not part of the shoot. It's like when I'm, I'm either setting up a light or I'm not ready to shoot yet. The kids will be, especially I, like I shoot kids, a lot of times they're kind of either thinking or they're playing with a bracelet. You'll actually see what their body does naturally. So like a lot of kids will kind of fall into how they stand all the time. And so this in these in-between moments, look for them. Don't let them go by because when you grab that photograph, mom and dad will later see, oh, that's like our, how our kids really are. Like for example, my son loves to stand with his hands like this all the time. And, and he's just, that's his comfort. When he's like looking around and stuff, he will put his hands on his hips and he's been doing that since he's a little guy. And so I know that when I grab him like that, Hope he doesn't see this because he'll stop doing it. But uh, when I grab him like that, I know that touches me here because he's been doing that his whole life. So look for those in-between moments. And last but not least, uh, I recommend getting a camera that can handle all this dynamic stuff. Something that can shoot frames per second, uh, any camera that can do eye or face tracking. Um, yeah. it. Can you do the, the dynamic portraits without those cameras? Absolutely. It's just the hit rate is so much better. It's like 95% plus with some of these cameras with all these automated autofocus, eye autofocus tracking that it makes your life so much easier and you're going to get a lot more hits and a lot more dynamic portraits. All right. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys next time.